Hello everybody, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me on my channel. Um, I'd love to show you today how to create this beautiful emboss embossing folder look without using an embossing folder. Maybe you don't have um, a die cutting machine to hand or you don't own any embossing folders just yet. Uh, you can still achieve this beautiful patterned effect very easily. And I love the grid that we've created here as well. Really easy to do. All you need is a scoreboard. And ideally, if you've got one, a scoreboard that is an envelope maker as well or a box maker because they come with this 45 degree angle template that slots in. And we are going to be using the edge of this template quite a lot. Otherwise, you uh, may need to create your own, but I'll explain that in just a moment. Please do subscribe if you haven't done already. And let's get on with the tutorial. So to make this beautiful background, you're going to need a scoreboard. I always say the bigger the better. This one is the Creative Craft Products scoreboard. So it has increments of an eighth of an inch, which is perfect for a lovely detailed look. Um, but not only is this a scoreboard, it's also an envelope and um, box maker. And that means it has this kind of diagonal uh, platform or template that fits inside it. So with this particular scoreboard, this panel sits behind here. Some of them have it, some of them don't, but what you do want is a scoreboard that does have this. Otherwise you need to create yourself a 45 degree angle template to go on your scoreboard. So this one's perfect. I will link it down below. Uh, it's available at Craft Stash, so you can go and check that out. You're also going to need a pencil and a ruler, obviously your scoring tool as well. Um, and you're going to need some cardstock. Now I would say go with a really heavyweight cardstock and that way you don't risk accidentally tearing through the paper. So have a look at your scoreboard and work out your measurements. Now, like I say, with um, with an eighth of an inch, I've worked out that actually squares of one and a half inches are a really nice pattern. So I'm going to use that for this. So on here, I'm going to measure out, so the width of my cardstock is already four and a half inches. So that's perfect for me to go one and a half, three, and then four and a half. And I'll do the same down the bottom here as well. So one and a half, three and four and a half. This way we're going to have um, a slightly larger panel than I need for my card base and then I can trim it down. If you make any small mistakes, you have a little bit of excess there. Hopefully you can kind of trim around those to fit the front of your card. So drawing my lines, doesn't matter how dark you draw these on because at this stage, this is going to be the back of your project. So now work your way down the either the edge of the card or the lines and we're going to mark again one and a half inch increments. So one and a half, three, four and a half, six, and then that's seven and a half. And do the same a little bit further along the card so you can mark these lines. And you're creating, oops, that one, take that one away. So we're to six. I'm going to start one and a half, three, four and a half, six, there we go. And then just draw the lines across there. Again, doesn't matter if you want to draw quite dark with your pencil so you can really see them, because this will be the back of your project. And one more, there we go. Okay, now time to bring your cardstock into your project. So your scoreboard, put your envelope uh, template, so the 45 degree angle onto your scoreboard and just pop your piece of paper up against it. It doesn't matter which side you start with. I tend to start with the longest side there and put, your, put the corner of your paper just right up to the top there. And we're going to start in one corner. As you start going through this process and you start to get to uh, understand it, you'll probably be doing more than one square at a time. Uh, but I would say to start with work on one square at a time, then move your paper, move along to the next square. That will just give you more confidence, make sure you're doing it all correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down the first corner square there, directly down the middle. Okay, And then I'm just going to move my scoring tool along and go down to that pencil line again. Now it's important with your scoring tool that you have a bit of a point on it. This is going to allow you to get right up to the line. So go down the next line and you'll notice you sort of have a blunt end and you can turn your tool over and just make sure that's a nice sharp line against the pencil line there. And just work your way along each of the increments. And if you want a bolder print, you could go for every other line here if you wanted to as well. That would give you a different look. 
So just working, so you're scoring only down as far as the pencil line. Okay, and then we can come along to the next ones. So, one. Now you may want to just feel where the lines are, and that just involves moving your scoring tool along your cardstock just a little bit, and you start to feel where the groove is, and then go into each one. Now you will need to move your cardstock down at some point because we have this lip on this particular scoreboard. So move that down, keeping your tool in, in one of the grooves so you can feel that it's slot in place into the grooves and you can carry on just feeling where each of these are. Now the first couple of squares are probably the hardest. What you'll notice is once you've done a few of these it gets easier. So hopefully, there we go, you can see we've got our first set of nice neat lines okay so we've done this this way so what we're now going to do is turn our cardstock just 90 degrees and put the short edge up against the 45 degree angle there now if you put the pencil line into a groove what should happen is each of your the end of your score lines should line up with another groove Okay, so if you start at one of your pencil lines, or start at the top into a groove, then you should then meet your pencil line and it should line up with one of your grooves here too. And another one. You can find after a while, this is, uh, this is quite a lot of work on your um, fingers. So if you need to take a rest, do so. And then I'm going to carry on working across the paper again, just using that tool to kind of gauge where each of the lines are until I've worked all the way across. And then what I like to do for a nice neat finish is once I've worked across, just come to the pencil lines and just ensure I've got a nice neat finish on the ends of each of those lines as well. There we go, now turn that over. Hopefully, if I can get that at the right light for you, let's see, correct angle. Well, you can hopefully see that we've got our two lines there meeting absolutely beautifully. Now, let's turn this over and we can now carry on working because we can now see where our lines are. So if we go to the end of our embossed lines, we can easily see where they meet up. And we can, if we want to, also come all the way down through a couple of squares. Just don't forget not to cross over the squares. So work your way across the entire project here, probably doing one square at a time to start with until you have a beautiful pattern. So I'm going to keep working at this one square at a time with my scoring tool, making sure I get everything in the right direction and every now and then just checking to make sure I'm happy with it all and then I'll come back and we'll finish off the card. So now I've worked my way across that entire panel of paper, you can see hopefully just about the grid that's on there. Uh, that's the back. Uh, the back's a lovely pattern as well, but obviously you have the pencil lines there. If you're careful, you can probably erase the pencil lines and have it as a deboss, but I prefer the emboss on the other side. Uh, just so you can see this a little easier, I'm just going to take a nice pale brown, so let's see, gathered twigs I think will work. Um, I'm probably not going to add much in the way of ink onto my brush, but I'm just going to lightly just drag my brush over the top of the stripes here um, in different directions just to pick out the pattern a little more. There we go, so that will sit on my card base like that. So let's just glue uh, a floral piece on. I've got a 3D layering floral die cut that I'm going to put on top of this. I'm just going to apply this with glue. Those score lines shouldn't go anywhere, they shouldn't uh, flatten out at all, but the glue will just help to ensure that stays in place once it's dry. Don't press too hard, obviously, because you want to avoid depressing any of those lines. So that's on there, and then I've got 
some florals here just from the Paris Romance Textures Collection. Uh, this is the floral layering die set. I've already got some flowers put together, so these are going to sit. So these will be the nice bold focal points but they're absolutely perfect to work alongside that subtle background that we've created without even needing an embossing folder. There we go. So you can see this, the texture in the background. It almost looks like fabric. It's really beautiful, uh, nice and subtle and perfect if you don't want to add too much in the way of colour to the background of your card. If you really want the colours of your focal point, in this case, uh, this is my flower. If I really want this to pop, and leave it a pale background without being too plain. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. And uh, please do subscribe if you want more videos like this. And I've got lots more over on my channel. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.